I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In this episode, I'm going to be working on a Woodside Gondola Car from Kitchy Train Group. Now this gondola car will transport aggregate from the quarry on my layout to the concrete factory. John Crowder here on Facebook, his channel is called JC's Rip Track, is hosting a contest called the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest. And this car will be one of my entries into that contest. I'm going to be working on the construction in this video, and in the next video, I'll be working on the weathering for this car that will be my entry. You can find out more about this contest from the link up above, and I'll have information in the description down below as well. There are lots of great prizes available in this contest, and if you're a modeler, you might want to consider entering. Well, let's jump into it. As usual, I began by unboxing the model, examining the parts, and giving the instructions an initial read-through. Although detailed, this model isn't overly complicated. I began by installing the end beams onto the flatbed of the car. I picked up some tweezer style sprue cutters from Micromark recently and I found them to be an upgrade from my old sprue cutters. My usual prep was performed, filing and trimming away the extra bit of the spurs and any flashing from the molding. After installing the end beams, I installed the side sills. I use an extra thin cement from Tamiya for most of the assembly. It flows well into the joints and is easy to use. Next, I assembled the fish belly of the underframe assembly. I also installed the coupler pockets. This is one place I depart from my usual thin cement and use a thicker cement. The large flat surfaces make this use of glue easier. After the coupler pockets were cured, I installed the body bolsters. These are not symmetrical. There is an A side and a B side of the car, and it is important to install the correct parts on each side. Continuing with the A side, B side theme, each cross sill section is unique, and the fish bellies are different from each other as well. I clipped each cross sill and installed them one at a time before moving on to the next to ensure that they were installed in the proper location. Once these were installed and the cement had cured, I installed a bracket for the brake cylinder.
Then I installed three brake lever ends in turn, making sure to clip, prep, and install before moving on to the next lever end. Finally, I installed the brake cylinder on the bracket. The underframe was now ready to install on the bottom of the flatbed, after some dry fitting and filing to make sure it fits snugly. The weight for this model fits in between the left and right sides of the fish belt. I filed down the flashing for the molding and dry fit it into place along with the main cross sills. CA glue is used to cement the weight into place and I used a toothpick to apply the glue before putting the weight in place. Now the main cross cells are ready to be installed. The train line for this model is made from both wire and two styrene pieces. The placement of the weight does not allow for a single wire train line on this model. I cemented the curved styrene train line sections into place on the fish belly and cross sills. I bent and clipped the wire train line pieces to size according to the templates on the instructions. I installed the train line on the A side of the car and started to install it for the B side. This is where I ran into some issues. It wasn't fitting quite right. The line bends up and goes through some holes in the cross sills, although this wasn't quite clear to me from the kit's instructions. This is where I noticed an issue. I didn't pay close enough attention when installing the main cross sills and installed them on the wrong sides. On the B side, there should be extra holes for both the train line and the brake rods. So, I needed to make some modifications to make this work. I pulled out my pin vise and X-Acto knife and got to work.
With this fixed, I was ready to install the second wire section of the train line. I moved on to the brake rods. I clipped them to size based on the instructions template. And then installed them. The final piece to install on the underframe was a branch line that connects to the fish belly and the train line. I then installed the brake shaft bracket and the ratchet plate on the B side of the car. I clipped a bit of wire for the brake shaft and glued on the brake wheel. Finally, I installed the brake shaft. The kit comes with options of either styrene or wire grab irons. I chose to install the wire ones. I think they look better. I drilled out the holes for the grab irons with my pin vise. I snipped the wires before installing the grab irons on the ends, but decided to wait to snip the wire for the sides after they were installed and glued in place. As with all metal components for this model, I used CA glue to affix the grab irons. When the glue was dry, I snipped the wires for the grab irons installed on the sides. There are 20 stake pockets installed along the side of the car. I snipped these from the spurs. and then I cemented them along the sides. I landed on the following technique. I placed the pockets of my tweezers in the correct orientation, added a small bit of thin cement on the back of the pocket, and placed them on the model. Applying the cement beforehand made the pockets a bit tacky, so they more easily stuck to the model. The final piece was to prep the gondola sides, 
I will not be installing these parts at this time. They will be easier to paint and weather if they are not installed on the model. However, I do want to do a small bit of pre-assembly, namely installing the grab irons. I drilled out the holes for the grab irons and installed them on the model. With this part complete, I am in a stopping point with this model and will be setting it aside for paint and weathering and final assembly. Well, thanks for joining me on this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please click on the like button below. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and you can find links to those pages below, along with links to the supplies and materials that I use in my modeling. Well, there's going to be another delay between this episode and the next. I'm headed out to cook for my 100 closest friends for the next week or so as I go run the kitchen for my kids' scout camp. I'm planning to do the weathering on this car in the next video, but with my crazy summer plans, we'll see how that goes. Well, thanks for joining me again, and please join me next time as I continue building the White River Line.